did you come to that conclusion yourself? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I saw the comments right away and I was like, this is not, I mean, that's just not okay. Like if my- So if I want to hook up with dudes for a month in March, I can't do that. Are you being, making that as a joke or are you being legitimate? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Impulsive. We are here to fuck shit up today. But first, we must fix something. Um, you guys might remember uh, at the beginning of the year, this was our first podcast back. Um, this is something that I said. Nobody move. Check your six. Don't breathe. 2019 is off to a good start. I have yet to make a mistake and ruin my entire career. Look out! Oh, fucking shit! Oh. I spoke too soon. I hate to hear it. I, I, I spoke too soon because, um, as you guys know, may, may know, uh, this past weekend I was uh, yet again at the center of controversy when we said, or me specifically, when I said this on a podcast with Brother Nature. Where again? No, no, no. Uh, it's, what is it? Male only March? Male. Uh, why don't you say this part? So ma it's male only March. We're going to attempt to go gay for just one month. For one oh, month. Damn. And then swing, and then go back. Yeah. yeah so the LGBT community was, um, not happy with me at all. They roasted and toasted me on Twitter. There was over um, 140,000 uh, tweets. Um, again, just- just Press coverage. Yeah, it, it was, uh, once again, I was the headline, Logan Paul receives backlash um, about the going gay comment. And um, here I am thinking I made an innocuous, harmless comment about um, sexuality, but the gay community made it very clear that it does not work like that. So I have not addressed this. I actually have been um, very low on social for two reasons. A, I got my tonsils out and it, this recovery is a, is a motherfucker. This surgery is a bitch and I have not been able to talk even now. That's why I'm sort of talking rhythmically. Shit hurts. But um, B, I also don't feel like the cookie cutter social media response of uh, uploading an, an apology video or writing something in my notes and then screenshotting it and posting it to Twitter was uh, appropriate for this. This started on Impulsive and I want to flesh it out on Impulsive, but more importantly, um, as I try to do with this podcast, use this as an educational opportunity for us um, and you guys, the audience, to learn about the LGBTQ community, community and the things they go through, the struggles they've been through. Um, and believe it or not, I am and always have been and always will be a huge proponent and supporter of the LGBTQ movement. Um, and for the hundreds of thousands of people who um, tweeted at me online, uh, said whatever, if you guys are even watching this, which I, I really hope you are, if you ever... Never, ever do anything again regarding Logan Paul. I have one ask, and it, it is that you uh, you watch the entirety of this podcast. I think that's a fair ask. Um, and through, through many of the tweets, um, and there were many, we got one from an organization called GLAAD. Um, this was one of the first ones that came in. That's not how it works at Logan Paul. So here to elaborate on the subject matter and explain to us how it does indeed work is Air Force veteran, yacht master, author, and inventor of mustard, Josh Seafried. Love mustard. Love your work with mustard. I, I love great. mustard too. Great Low job. calories, no calories. It's really just phenomenal all around. How are you, Josh? I'm doing well. Yo, so you, you're from DC. I am. You I live there right now. You flew in yep. just, for, just for this. Just for 48 hours, just for this. Let's go, bro. I, I wish I was at 100% for you. I'm, I have like a lisp. I can barely talk right now. Have you ever gotten your tonsils out? I have not gotten my tonsils out, but I've had tons of dental work done. Like half my teeth are fake. Don't, really? Oh, yeah. Okay, never get your tonsils out. It, yeah. This shit is a bitch, <laughs> yeah. bro. It sucks. Yeah. Um, but thank you for coming. Thanks, Thanks for, 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 for joining us on Impulsive today. Hopefully we can get um, some education uh, today from you. And I, I undersold you there a bit on the intro. Can you elaborate on the, some, some of the cool stuff you've done for the LGBTQ community? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I joined the Air Force about nine years ago or 10 years ago. Um, and I had a pretty untraditional path. Uh, within four months, I was blackmailed by an instructor for being gay uh, through my whole career in Jeopardy. And, uh, you know, when my career was going down, I decided to do something about it. So I organized uh, the LGBT community in a hidden social network. Uh, that grew to thousands of people. And uh, when we started to work on the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, the Pentagon and the, the White House would actually uh, work with us to help repeal and implement the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I think most importantly is that during Don't Ask, Don't Tell, the LGBT community felt alone. 
You know, when they're at a base in Afghanistan or Iraq, there's no one they could talk to. Right. And when we started to connect them via social media, they, for the first time, could talk to each other, find people. Um, they were having coffee meetings in Afghanistan. They still do. There's tons of people that are serving right now that are connected because of what we created uh, with our social media. What, what's that organization called? Outserve. It's Outserve. now Outserve SLDN. Outserve. Um, and they still actively work um, on LGBT issues in the military. As we know, uh, Trump has put on a trans ban of military service right now. And there's trans people right now serving in the military in Af Afghanistan and Iraq. And... Uh, we're still fighting for that. And so Outserve SLDN is leading the way on on fighting Trump in the courts and also uh, making sure that they can serve. Yeah, this which is amazing, man. Thank you, A, for your service and B, for the things you've done for the LGBTQ community. Like, round of applause. Um, seriously, amazing work. He has a book. It's called Our Time. Um, I would read this if I could read. I, I actually, I can't read words. I can do some pictures for is you. There, you if it's a picture yeah. book, I can, I, I would love to. Uh, Love to read it. So this is the the thing you're doing is is one of the very very relevant social topics right now, and that's why I I, I actually think this podcast is going to be great because um, I am a huge proponent of the LGBTQ community. Again, believe it or not, and I always have been. Um, and so I think I I'm I'm very comfortable with this subject. So you're openly gay, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. I am. So so Mike goes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, lo I love that. Surprise. <laughs> so. so so did my comment offend you personally? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, and I think one of the reasons it offended me is that I, I watch some of your stuff on YouTube, um, but my brothers are 11 and 14 years younger than I am, and they love you. And, you know, they don't watch me on CNN or MSNBC, but they watch you. And so when they see you making a joke about being gay or going gay for a month, it affects them. You are a person that sets the tone of what is acceptable to make a joke of. And so when youth watch you and say, hey, Logan Paul made this joke, that's what kind of uh, legitimizes bullying in school. I mean, because, you know, I grew up, you know, in a Southern Baptist uh, household where I had this in elementary school on the playground. They would joke about, hey, this kid's gay or things like that. And that's what people could take from your comments. And that's why it was um, awful. And I think uh, you two, especially, like when you heard Logan say this, you should also step up to say, that's not cool, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I think you all, we need to be accountable as men to each other to say, hey, this is not okay. I, I agree. Absolutely. <clears throat> Did you decide it was a joke? What? Did you decide it was a joke? It, for you? Over what you said? Yeah. Oh, I did not think it was a joke at all. I don't think it is acceptable to make that kind of joke. Do you think it's a joke? What What he said, do you think what he said was a joke? No. Was he, I think, I think what he's asking is, do you think he was being humorous or was he making a statement about an intention to actually- Oh, I think he was trying to be humorous. Okay. Was he successful? No. Okay. Did you come to that conclusion yourself? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I saw the comments right away and I was like, this is not, I mean, that's just not okay. Like if my- So if I want to hook up with dudes for a month in March, I can't do that? Are you being, making that as a joke or are you being legitimate? Like if you are generally uh, want to experiment with men, that's a different thing than saying, hey, I'm going to go gay for a month, so, making a joke. So if you're being a, if you're making a joke, that's one thing. If you're being serious and want to, and, and want to experiment with men, that's a completely different thing. And if you want to clarify that, I, that's that's what I would love to do here because that's where I feel like there's been uh, there's been uh, there's a gap some yeah. somewhere here between between what I said and what I tweeted back at Glad was um, this was a poor choice of words because that's what it was it was a very poor choice of words I understand now that I I've going gay is not a choice that is not what I implied by saying that that is that was what the narrative. That was chosen that the, that the media decided to run with. I've never thought that. I think who you are attracted to is innate to who you are. That is genetic. And that's that's that. I've, I've thought that my whole life. And I've had arguments at length at this house about that. L like, plain and simple, that is what I believe. And by me saying I was going gay, horrible choice of words. Because, I again, I understand you cannot just go gay. But if I want to experiment with men for a month during March... How would you describe that action? It's experimentation. You're you're essentially maybe bi curious and you want to explore your sexuality, and we need to support that. I mean, if that's what you're choosing to do is explore your sexuality, then we can have a discussion about that. And uh, I mean, there's tons of support and resources out there to do so because I know it's a very scary thing being a very public person to say, "Hey, I I, I have this curiosity. I want to explore my sexuality," and we need to have a support system for that to happen. So but it's not it's not even scary to me because like sexuality is so fluid nowadays. I don't think twice about talking about being 
being gay. I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't think being gay is being gay is cool to me. I think that it's a very cool thing. It is incredibly courageous and noble. If you are a gay person to come out and put your foot down and, and defy society and say, no, this is who I am. This is me. There is nothing more beautiful than being yourself. So I, I, I don't, I, again, I, I didn't think twice about it because to me, sexuality is so fluid. Like I, 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 like, I don't care if he's gay, if she's gay, if he's bisexual, if he's going to be a transgender, I don't give a fuck, dude. So that's why, and th this, this hurts me because I am such a pro gay dude. Like, um, what, I mean, if you're being truthful that you really are planning to experiment with men next month or in February, then let's, let's, let's make that clear. I mean, because I think that's what's that you need to make that clear so that people do I, this. do I need to make that clear I think or so. is that, uh, is, or is that up to me? Is that my decision? It's absolutely your decision, but I think that you need to clarify whether or not it's a joke or not a joke. So one thing that I saw quite a bit of is that some of the gay community actually defended Logan and said, um, you know, hey, it's the same as a straight person making or a, a gay person making the comment that I'm going to go straight. So what's your opinion on that? I know it, it's different, obviously, because that community has been suppressed, but there is a large gay community that didn't get offended. They saw it as a joke. So I guess that's our learning lesson here is figuring out, OK, well, that's a joke that crossed the line for some people. And I think that's what we're figuring out now. And I think a lot of people that uh, uh weren't offended by it kind of probably live in that bubble that uh you know don't have the marginalized community that they live in i mean uh they they come from a place of privilege and i think that you need to understand that uh the gay community is marginalized like 87 percent of all lgbtq students are bullied in school and so uh we just want to create that atmosphere where you don't have to be the biggest advocate in the world, but you just got to not be an asshole. And that's what we got to do is, um, and, and a great example of this is, is family guy phasing out their, their gay jokes right now is that we just need to set the tone that it's not uh, funny right now, especially in the entertainment industry. Uh, speaking about glad they do a study every year about the acceptance of LGBT uh, people in America. And uh, last year is at 54%. This year it's at 49%. So it's actually going down. And when we see trends like that in America, we need to step back and say, what are we doing to make America, America better um, and how we're creating this kind of trend? And I think saying it's a joke sets that kind of trend. I, I think throughout but, but, the- Wait, but I just want to make clear. Uh, yeah. I did not say that was a joke. That was the narrative that the media decided to run with because my name is Logan Paul. So are, I mean, are you trying to say that you're going to like explore your sexuality? Who no. knows? If I want to in March, I'm going to fucking do it. If I want to hook up with dudes in March, I'm going to fucking do it. Like I, I am not on this uh, train of, oh, I, I, I'm worried about people think I'm, I'm gay or I'm straight. Again, I don't care. I think I was, I said something again, poor choice of words. And by the way, I'm incredibly sorry from the bottom of my heart for any implication that being gay is a choice. I do not believe that. I think it is an innate who you are attracted to. I think I uh, misspoke and used the word gay, a, a ch very charged word gay interchangeably um, and mistakenly with a word like experiment or try out. And for that, genuinely am very sorry. But I think also it's clear that you need to make clear, especially to the people that watch you, that this isn't a joke, that if you're truly going to experiment with men, you're not making fun of this process. Like I'm taking a dude upstairs, like, and then make a funny vlog about it. Like you need to be serious that this is like something that's going on in your life. Cause if you, at the moment that you start making fun of the fact that you're taking a guy upstairs, that's where it crosses the line and becomes a joke. I have a, I have a quick question on that. Is, are we just, just to make a clear blanket statement right now, are we as a society at a point where we can say without fail, that it is not okay for a straight person to make a joke about the gay community, about being gay, about experimenting with being gay. Like, I think as, as times have changed in America, we've seen certain jokes ruled out. We've seen things not be okay to joke about. Have we reached that point? With Absolutely not. I mean, like if you watch Conan, he did a hilarious stunt where he went on Grindr. Um, I forget who he went on with, but he went on Grindr to find people and it was hilarious, but he's there with a, a LGBT advocate and it's, it's funny, but he's not crossing a line where he's saying, hey, I can go gay for a month where you still have, you know, 35 states where gay youth conversion therapy is still okay. Like that's where the narrative of 
you know, I can go gay for a month is, is so, problematic. So him going on Grinder is him saying I am okay with experimenting for a short period of time. Like what, he wasn't what, experimenting, but he was he was having fun with why, going why, on Grindr. Why was he on Grinder? Uh, they were trying to just show like how you can meet people on Grinder. It wasn't a hookup kind of. Concept. But there was an implication there, right? Yeah. Like there was an implication that he was going to jokingly experiment as being. Oh no! There, there, was, there was or, never, there was never an experimentation of like, "Hey, I'm going to go hook up with this guy." Then know. why is he on Grinder? Yeah, why wouldn't he use Tinder? Oh, I use Grinder all the time for not uh, hooking course. up. I like, mean, yes, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, when I when I travel through Europe, Grinder's a great no, way no, to no, meet no. people. Just hear, but hear me out. But you're but you're gay, obviously, and so it, it's the platform that makes sense for you. Why would he not use a Tinder or a Bumble where there's more of an opportunity to have straight? He did too. He did. Yeah. He did all. Yeah. Of them. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 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 Okay. I'm just wondering, and, and I hate to do this. Um, I really hate to do this, but I, 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 I do feel a bit uh, like there's a, like a pile of rocks on me, sort of, as you know. Um, I have been at the center of public controversy. Um, but I do feel like there's a, a magnifying glass on me now that I don't, that I am trying to get out from underneath. Um, and again, I hate to do this, but... Joe Rogan said this on his podcast uh, four, three days ago. After three days ago, yeah. which is after, which is after um, I said what I said. <laughs> she bird boxes you. When Women are done room. with us, man. They're done. I feel like they're done. Do you feel like that? <laughs> I think it's a precarious time. A lot of chicks are probably going lesbo this week. Oh, it's a, dude. I Especially would be a, with Trump. I think the uh, the more days. That the the government is shut down, the more women are going to go lesbian. They're yeah. going to hate men so much because of Trump. They're just yeah. going to go gay. But people and always gay say people right now going, "That's not how it works." <laughs> Duh! Remember what I said earlier about jokes. But it, what's funny? Not a single tweet about that. Well, so one, I'm not the media. I'm not the person that's like putting you up here to say, "Hey, uh, you did this wrong." But two. Shame on you for trying to deflect your own actions. Like you're literally saying- Shame on me? Yeah, I mean, why? 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 You, like, why was there not a tweet about Joe Rogan? I don't control the other tweets. I don't even know who he is. I, I, I've, but like you, yeah. like you're deflecting from your own actions. Not really. I've you just said, made it very clear that I'm very sorry for any implication that being gay is a choice. And I'm saying, why, where's, where's the line drawn between like, Something I say and something another person shame says. Shame on because him too. Like I mean, I'm. I, I, you want me to get my Twitter out right now and shame him too? I'll do it. So, no, I don't because yeah. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in watching something and the the, the very first thought that enters my brain is, "Wow, what an asshole for attack attack yeah. well, for our home." Me being homophobic, bro, brother. I've kissed many men, whether it's on film, whether it's just fucking around in the vlogs, like, and this is why when I'm under attack for this whole thing, I'm sitting here like, do I, do I tweet these pictures of me in like films, kissing dudes in acting class? Like what, trying to like prove my gayness? No, that's not right. Then that's weird. Like, which is this whole thing, like it, it, it hurts. So I want you to continue talking about, about this and why, like, cause you're, you're literally your first thing was shame on you. And that's not what I asked you to do. To I'm saying, where is that? Does that offend you? Yes, absolutely. It does. I mean, I, and I said that first thing was that that offends me too. I, I, I listen. Even I, though he clarified that it is a joke and um, gave it context. Absolutely. I think it's. I think at, at that point, like when you are making jokes like that, it's just not acceptable. Your, I think to, what what Mike was saying is he's trying to find a narrative. Okay, and you you said it's not necessarily that time that we can't joke about these things. So. If he's clarifying it's a joke, um, you know, Logan was clearly not, you know, trying to like defame anybody. So where, what's a reasonable way that we can still joke about something but not offend people? Because everybody's going to get offended at something. Exactly. And there's not a thousand page manual that I can write to say, hey, you're going to do this joke, do this. Like I'm not. It's context. It's exactly. It's context. I think what you just said was was an example of a bad context. Now, I mean, I believe you when you say that you're an advocate for the LGBTQ world. Like, I'm not here to crucify you at all. Right. And I believe that, um, you know, your your apology is genuine and you can be a great ally. And I think your actions should just back that up. Um, but I'm not here to, to crucify anyone or anything. I'm just here to talk about how we can improve, you know, the LGBTQ uh, representation in, in entertainment and, and make it a better world. Yeah. I, just just to go back really quick to the to the Rogan thing. I 
to, on your point of like deflecting, you know, he's, he's obviously apologized. I don't think he's trying to deflect. I think what he's trying to do is bring up an example of this train that is run against him. Right. And so, and, and not, and not, it's not even not, only not, against listen, me, listen, but, but let me, let me, let me finish this point. He, the, when, when all of this stuff broke, there was a hundred thousand tweets. There was big press pickup. There was stuff all over the internet. Everyone was talking about it. And so me and Logan went back and we said, like, man, this video has got to have millions of views on it. Now we went back and there was probably 10,000 new views on it. And so what that immediately said to me was people are seeing this headline. Logan Paul makes jokes about gays and immediately hitting retweet, retweet, retweet. This kid cannot be trusted. This kid is. And so I, I think there's a, there's a combination here of doing something that was unacceptable, but also going out and sharing news, sharing headlines before waiting on the most important thing, which is him giving some sort of feedback or clarity on what he meant or digging in a little bit and seeing that he's kissed men or had plenty of gay people on the show in the past or, or, or in his vlogs or were surrounded by gay people constantly. So I had two people reach out to me after the show and they said, hey, I'm seeing these headlines right now. Like, I'm, I'm kind of upset. Can you clarify? He has a large audience, so they can't do that. But I got the ability to go and tell those people, hey, man, like, listen, you know me in real life. You know I love you and I accept you. This was a, a, a mistake where words were said interchangeably where they shouldn't have been. But, like, he, he feels very attacked. And I even felt it on this one where people get into this group think and this, and this mob mentality, you know? And so— I'm just wondering— does does a poor choice of words, a way I misspoke because of my ignorance on the subject. And I, let, me, let me say this real quick. Yeah. Like even when I was prepping for this interview, I completely said that to other people when I was prepping for this. I don't think anything you did was malicious. I just think it was uh, ignorance. I mean, of and course it wasn't malicious. That, and of point. course it was ignorant. Yeah. But does that warrant 140,000 people <laughs> telling me to go kill myself? I don't Instead I, of going gay for a month, can Logan Paul go away forever? 51,000 likes. Is there something? It, I'm missing something here. Well, I think he didn't say kill. Gus, not on that. What does go, yeah, for, go away forever oh, mean to you? Not make video. Like, not make. I mean, I, I, there are people who have said kill yourself. Oh, oh yeah, many, absolutely. Many. I mean, I, I get that too. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you that like I, I as I started to research this and uh, like watch your videos and watch a lot of the Twitter against you, I I actually could not believe how much hatred is towards you. I don't get it. Um, I mean, I know, I know that you made mistakes and stuff, but like it, that's kind of the internet bullying that goes on, and mm -hmm. it's it's terrible and. Uh, um, <laughs> Wasn't uh, our first lady supposed to deal with some of these issues? <laughs> and but like, <laughs> what's going on over there, Melania? Melania yeah, let's me. get it together. Come help on. me! I need your help. But I mean, like, it's awful. And I mean, it's it's something that we need to talk about is like internet bullying because people shouldn't say go kill yourself. No. People should be doing what I did: reach out to try to have and a yo, narrative. And yo, thank you. <laughs> this is all I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> my manager, my publicist. They're sitting for the past week and a half. I'm like, please. Just get someone on impulsive so I can talk to them about this so we can talk and grow and grow a conversation, not just a, an attack, wishing death upon someone to go away forever because of a poor choice of words on a long form based 45 minute podcast, which, by the way, is called impulsive. I'm going to say things sometimes that just come out. I don't always think about them. I'm working on it. <laughs> I am working on it. But I've said this before, I'm going to make mistakes. I, if there are a million people watching this podcast, there is a 0% chance that I don't offend one person. I'm, I'm trying my best, but I am uninterested in playing this game where I try to appease everyone anymore. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to be myself. If you like watching my content, please do like and subscribe. Get your merch. If you don't, don't watch but that, my but, fucking content. But that content. said, you do, give, you do give a fuck. Don't blanket statement it because you give a fuck enough to to have this conversation because this is and, important and, uh, for me because for sure, i am a, i am a huge proponent of the lgbtq community huge and i always have been i i love it i love the movement and i i'm sorry i'm getting so fired up i know y'all don't I mean, know that's good. i mean that's like good this. to be fired yeah. up i mean and i think that that that's that's good on you that you want i i know from the back 
channels that we've had on this that you are genuinely wanting to have a conversation and make this a teachable moment. Yep. And that's important. And I know that you had some issues with your tonsils and you couldn't do it immediately, but that's why I'm here to have these teachable moments. And I think that that's, we're not going to be able to create a manual of these are all the gay jokes you can't say. These are all the other jokes that you can't say. We can't do that. But what we can do is when kind of these reactions happen is have a conversation like we're having now and say, hey, this is how we can, you know, fix this kind of narrative and talk about it and realize that we are all on the same team here and we want to be allies and, and how can we improve ourselves? Because you understand the position that you're in. We understand the media is unfair. It's been unfair to me. I mean, I get yeah. these tweets too. I'm getting so much hate mail half the time. And I'm, I'm sure, sure I'll get, I'm sure you, I'm going to get you, some you, after you, this. You absolutely will, yeah. by the way. Yeah. What, like, what did you, what are you thinking going on Logan Paul's show I, and giving him a voice? Like, <laughs> I'll show you some of this after this that I, I, you know, I consult a lot of my, uh, you know, mentors, like, should I do this? And I was, I, everyone said no. And you know what? And I was like, but what, made me do this was my brothers and my family members that they love you. And that's the important message that we talk about this because I'm not doing this for the people in DC or watch me on MSNBC or CNN. I'm doing this for the people that are in high school and middle school that love you and want to have that kind of conversation. And, and same, by the way. Yeah. And same, because I, like, like I said, there is nothing more beautiful than being yourself. And I mean that. And if that, if, and if you're gay and you're, you're afraid to come out of the closet, like, I get it. I understand. But hopefully with more conversations like this in 10 years or so, coming out of the closet won't even be a thing. Hopefully people will come out as straight. Yeah. That's, that's I believe, how fluid sexuality is going to become, which is I'm I'm thinking way ahead here. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just important for us that have this kind of like privilege to once in a while just realize that, you know, as we say this kind of stuff or joke about stuff, there are people that are still struggling with this in school. And like when we have bullying, it's being like exactly what you saw happen to you over the last week happens to kids on, on the playground still. And we need to make sure that we educate our people to say, hey, this isn't cool. And when our, we see our friends do this, we say it's also not cool. You, you brought up a point about um, internet bullying just now, um, about people kind of ganging up on, on anyone, not just Logan. And I, I have a question for you about the current cancel culture, they call it, right? And, and, and every time he does anything wrong, not even just, you know, this or that, He's canceled by by people on Twitter. Canceled. He's yeah. been canceled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been canceled more times than I can tell you. We shouldn't even be on right now because he's been canceled I, yeah, so many fucking I was times. I was canceled. Yeah, I've been right? canceled all the time. What has propagated or cultivated or continues to give life to this negative? We're going to end this person cancel culture that we see on the internet. What do you think is driving it? And do you think that? And more importantly, would you denounce that from happening no matter what the offense? Like, where is it okay to gang up on someone? Yeah, it, it's, it's a scary line to think about because I hate this mob mentality that happens. Like, and what happens sometimes is that we'll have some tweet go out and then a whole cycle of news comes out around it without, like, any kind of, you know— information about it. And I think that that's wrong. And um, we need to have the due process to learn about what actually exactly what we're doing now and have that kind of conversation. Um, but yeah, I absolutely do not kind of support this mob mentality of, uh, you know, immediately canceling everything. Let's make these teachable moments because, you know, if the last year didn't kill you then or cancel you, then you're not going to be. <laughs> look, not I'm not, look, I'm not going to be canceled yeah. ever. Like I'm, I'm going to be here for a minute. Sorry if, if, you, if you don't like me, like I'm, I'm, I'm going to be here. I'm going to stick around. Dang. But we're going to do better. Yeah. But, but we're going to do better. Absolutely. Exactly. Please, every day. Please, every yeah. fucking day. Absolutely. We're going to do better. And also, and also like, by the way, <laughs> tell us what we're doing wrong, but if we can do it in a different way. It, I love that. Yeah. Is there like I a way that. you could just like reach out to us or like not reach out to us, but even on Twitter, like, hey man, no, like here, here's, here's how, just, here's how yeah. again, I don't know if, I don't know if the, the people I want to be watching this are watching this, but here's how. Um, like, okay, let me paint a picture for you. Imagine being a person who sees something that you don't like, whether it's uh, me, Donald Trump, whatever. Imagine being a person um, and your first instinct is to attack, denounce, and wish that person goes away. What kind of person are you? To wish that upon another human being. Instead, think critically about the situation. Use your critical thinking skills. Research. Dive in, research, investigate, educate yourself on what's truly happening. Formulate an opinion and then voice that like we are doing now. Um, I think I think if, if, if there's two things people can take out of this podcast, it's that being gay is not a choice. Number one, uh, and, and, and the LGBTQ community is happening 
And if you're not with it, like get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. It's happening. It's a big movement and it's, it's going to grow and grow and grow until it is normalized. Um, and number two, I am praising critical thinking skills when it comes to your opinion on social injustices, presumable injustices. And, and on any issues, by the way. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is this conversation is not only relevant to the issue at hand here. This is a massive issue within this country right now. It's the sharing of fake and sensationalized news. And I don't use fake news the way Trump says it. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not going to get into my personal beliefs, but whether you're conservative, Democrat, uh, a supporter of LGBTQ, whatever, do your research, make critical statements that give people the opportunity to learn and grow from the feedback you're giving them. So not you're fucking canceled, not go kill yourself, not go die. Do you know how many times I've used language like that in the past 10 years since I was a child? Never. Sky Jackson tweeted this at me. I don't know who that is. I don't either. But she, she has followers. She looks eight it, years it, old. It there. got retweets. Uh, being gay is, isn't a choice. Being gay isn't a phase. Being gay shouldn't be used for a trend in subscribers. Grow up, Logan Paul. And again, this is where I'm like, like let, we don't even have to think critically. Let's just think for one second. Do you think for one second that saying what I said, which by the way, I voice was a mistake and a horrible choice of words. Do you think that increased my subscribers at all? I'm not sure. It did not. That does not increase my subscribers. This is a tweet that got favorites because she wanted to be a voice for her community with no research context or any idea what it means to gain subscribers. So on a here's my question to you is, is what would you do? What, what do you think the appropriate response should be? Because I think one of the, which, which I've gotten, by the way, yeah. pr- my version of appropriate responses. I mean, and, like how, how do you, re- how would you expect me to tweet after watching you on the podcast, being upset for it? What, what actions could I do in the first say 24 hours? If, if you're not you and not coming on my, my podcast and you want to tweet at me and voice your opinion through the internet. I would not tell me to go kill myself. I would not tell me I'm doing it for views, trend, or subscribers. I would say, Logan, and, and I've seen these, by the way. I've obviously just choosing the ones that I felt uh, were uh, little posted hastily. Um, I'd, I'd say, Logan, this is why we find offense to this. This is why our community has a problem with what you've said. Because, and again, I'm I'm assuming here. Because there was an implication that being gay is a choice. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's definitely what- Is that, is that the core of- I, I think that that's definitely the core of it. Is that like, you know, things like conversion therapy is a huge thing in the LGBTQ movement right now. I mean, it's a, it's a huge topic. Can, can, you, can you elaborate on that? Because uh, right off the bat, that sounds fucked it's totally, to me. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so in these states, parents are allowed to like, say, commit their, uh, their children to like conversion- like antidepressants, uh, yeah, and, and, and say, hey, yeah. there, and there's tons of stories out there. There's some great advocates uh, on this issue, but like, imagine being able to just put your kid in a home to say, hey, you need to convert back to, uh, you know, straight. being straight. And I mean, what the yeah. fuck? There's actually, there's actually a story. I think it's actually the very first one in there um, that talks about this person who was made to go straight. And then he got married to a, a woman, had a child, and then like, you know, ended up breaking down in the military just a few years later. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that happens. And and yeah. that's an important topic that like, I think that's where it re- really hit home for a lot of people is that like, that's such a big important issue right now. Did you say that was happening in 35 states? Yes, it's still a lot in 35 states right now. And it's being propagated by some top officials that I won't mention. Oh, absolutely. Like, uh, there are people that are behind it that are high ranking. Well, I mean like Pence's, uh, you, uh, you said, wife, yeah. I won't, I'll, I won't I'll say, say it. <laughs> <laughs> Pence's wife, uh, works at a school that, you know, you, you can't support, uh, being a homosexual right. or, or being gay. Um, and I think that that's just, that's the kind of atmosphere we live in right now, especially with the political clim- climate that and like, she, it's so heated right now that you get some of this yeah. reaction. And she's getting slammed. For oh, absolutely. It, and, and rightfully so. Absolutely. And, and so he, he said one of the ways you can respond to him when he makes a mistake on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or whatever is to, is to, you know, say, this is why we were offended. I, I even say, take a step back one more and say this, because not only does it, is it the right thing to do, but it gives you more ammo. If you are in the cancel culture, say, say Logan, can you clarify what you meant by this? Yeah. Logan, what did you mean by this? Which, which and, and that's about like surrounding yourself with people and friends that can help you with along that way. Right. Like if, I mean, I think that's exactly what you're doing now and hopefully what you'll do in the future. Which I mean, publications did reach out yeah. in all fairness and say, can you clarify what you meant by this? But I felt everything that's just been said needed to be said to answer that question. And I didn't feel like a tweet 
or an email would have uh, got it justly got that done. Yeah. Um, so as someone who you, you've been in the military receiving that kind of oppression, like yeah. that, that's, that's not easy. You have to be tough to be doing what you're doing, to be now a crusader, if you will, towards this movement. So as someone who's overcome that kind of hate, what would you recommend to those people who do find offense? Do you recommend take action instead of just hating and just sitting in, in that well, definitely bubble. no one should ever say, go kill yourself. Like that's a line that I think everyone definitely should never cross. What um, about go away forever? <laughs> a boiled down version, which to me means go die. I don't think that means the same. I, I feel I mean, the same way but as like, you. We also I, live yeah. in a country where free speech is allowed, right? Like that's, I, I get yeah, it. Yo, go tweet your thing. But like also, like I mean, I believe cancel Logan right now because I don't see the cute little dog running around. Like, yeah, where's Kong? <laughs> Damn Where is Kong? Can we get Kong? Yeah, here? yeah, actually. Someone? So cancel Logan until this comes I, out. Yo, I've He's been canceled, canceled so many times. <laughs> I've been canceled. Well. So we're just, do it again. we're <laughs> waiting for somebody to uncancel him, actually. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to come back. Yeah. <laughs> but no, wait. I, I, I like that. I like that question. What, what was the... Yeah, so, I mean, you're in the military yeah. of all places. That's the... the I mean, I that's got to be the worst level of hate. I watched an interview of you... Um, and uh, your interviewer asked this, and he said something about Air Force Academy cadets being sexually assaulted, and you could not report it or something? Yeah, that's a, a thing. It was an interview with John Ferugia, who's an amazing reporter out of Colorado. Um, he's the one that broke the famous sexual assault scandals back in, I want to say, 2003. Um, and yeah, it's, it's an angle of Don't Ask, Don't Tell that was never covered. Imagine living in the world in which, say, a person was raped, and couldn't turn around and report it because, uh, like, if by doing so, they're outing themselves. Um, right. And that, that exactly happened. It happened more than you can count. Um, and that creates a, a very scary culture. Um, of course. Yeah. And, and you, you obviously played a huge role in the repeal of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So for those of our audience members who don't know... Um, can you elaborate a bit on what it was and, and what you did to, to repeal it? It is actually amazing. I was speaking at the Air Force Academy about, I think, two years ago, and I was speaking to some English classes, and, uh, you know, I would ask, do you guys know what even Don't Ask, Don't Tell is? And they were like, you know, it's the policy that made uh, gay people stay in the closet. And it was like, it was, it was fascinating to me that, like, people didn't even know the policy. So I can imagine, like, even your viewers don't even know what Don't Ask, Don't Tell really is. Uh, don't Ask, Don't Tell was a policy passed by uh, Bill Clinton that was supposed to be a compromise that people wouldn't say that they're gay and people wouldn't ask them if they were gay. Um, and so it forced the the gay service members to be in the closet. Now, it did lead to witch hunts. It did lead to situations we just talked about where, you know, you couldn't report a sexual assault. It led to a very horrible time in the military. And um, I think we're at nine years now. It was repealed. Um, and so now gay service members can serve openly. There's been no problems whatsoever. Uh, the day Don't Ask, Don't Tell was actually repealed, uh, we had 100 people come out together in a magazine um, because we wanted to rip the Band-Aid off, say, hey, there's no issue here. Um, like, everything's uh, business as normal. And it was. Um, and then we had the – right when Obama was leaving the office, he was going to allow transgender service, which right. is still going on right now. And then Trump, when he came in, um, went for his trans – Ban Man. immediately. And we're seeing that fight right now in the courts. Um, and that's still to be resolved. And, and trans service members, you know, right now are still deployed in Iraq, Afghanistan, still fighting at this very moment. And yet we have this climate where we're turning our backs to them and not supporting them. So, I mean, this, this fight for uh, trans service members is, is far from over. And uh, we're going to be fighting it for a while. Yeah, I I agree. That's that's uh, that that's a subject that I think there's a lot of chiseling away at currently right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I think it will happen. I think it will. It's an embarrassment when all these other Western no nations, you know, have had this for 20 years. And I mean, it was the same with Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Like we were one of the w last Western nations to repeal to, or to, to allow open service. And it's an embarrassment. Why like, is, why do you think that is? You know, I mean, I think part of it was the compromise that happened with Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Um, you know, there was missteps with the political action that happened during that time. And so we kind of got stuck with this legislation and we had to work. 20 years to go Correct. through Congress. Like yeah. that's, it's, it's a long process to repeal a law. And I think because we had don't ask, don't tell, it just took that long to actually repeal it. It's a process. Be besides Logan Paul, what is the, what do you think currently is the biggest, uh, th threat to the gay and lesbian community? <laughs> Be besides, yeah, God but, damn it. but seriously, I'm not though. a threat. But seriously, like I'm on your team, bro. Like, <laughs> but, hey, oh, the thing, by the way. but seriously though, and, and outside, and outside of the, 
Yeah, say hi to Kong. Hi, Kong. Hey, fuck you, man. <laughs> no. Fuck but, you. But seriously, though, what is, what is what what is? Be, I, because I want it because you have you have a platform right now. You have young people watching the show, like you said. Besides, you know, this But I don't even know if they are, bro. Like, let's like they this, are. People will be watching this. And by the way, it's, this is a charged subject. It'll get it, it'll get out there. So yeah, like yeah, beyond, beyond the trans ban and and what we're and what we've already talked about, like what do you think is the core issue? that the LGBTQ community is facing right now and what can, more importantly, what can influencers or policymakers do to continue to support you guys' cause? You said it in your Hollywood Reporter interview. You said it at the very end when you talked about Taylor Swift, where a lot of you want to stay apolitical and, and you know, um, I understand that completely, but I think there's becoming a line where even Taylor Swift is like, we kind of need to say something at, Somebody, point. Yeah. at some point. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think we're, we're definitely getting there. When, you know, people at, are at the border wall and children are dying, I think we're getting to the point that it's it's getting there. Um, well, it is there. Um, and I, so I think first you have this problem with the administration. And then I think second is just culturally, right? The numbers that I talked about, we're going from 54% to 49% of, you know, acceptance in the LGBT community with normal Americans. So I think that... Uh, that's definitely. We just need to keep doing a, a big culture change. Do you think that? Do you think that's a direct result of the administration? When? How? How, how long has that trajectory been dropping? Just this last year. So yeah. we went. We went from you know fifty four percent last year to now forty nine percent. And so, I mean, it se- it seems like it's pretty obvious yeah. what the cause of that yeah. is. Yeah. I mean, I, I think. I mean, it's it's that whole kind of like thing of uh, you know. He claims he's the most, you know, supportive president to the LGBT community, but like then he goes and immediately does the trans ban. Like he's not a supporter right now, and um, I think that that's a huge threat, and we need to keep talking about it mm-hmm. uh, because it's just it's just going to keep getting worse. Not to change the subject and go backwards, but I'm going to do just that. You brought up my Hollywood Reporter inter- interview. Uh what was it like a three page, four page spread? Uh, the HR did with the beard. Uh, yeah, with the beard. I had yep. the beard at the time. Yep. And uh, the writer, Seth Abrahamovich, is gay, openly gay. He uh, he DM'd me on Twitter when this was all going down. He said, uh, Why? He said, I, I personally found it funny. And this is an openly gay guy. And he said, He said, Not all gay people think the same things, which I know is obviously true. Um, but he, he said the same question that I ask you asking is, is why is it fluid for everyone else and not you? And, um, I, I think the people that did find a problem with what I said were very vocal about it. And, uh, I want to do my best to try and clarify everything for them. But I also do want to say like, there are people who are a little bit more laid back when it comes to this stuff that, it's not you per se, but like Seth, the writer of the Hollywood Reporter article, like he was one of those people and he offered to come on impulsive. That's why Seth, had, sorry, you know, I love you. Uh, that's why I, f- I feel comfortable reading what he, he said to me. And I just think it's, it's, it comes with the territory. We all know that. Like it's, you're a public figure and everything you say is going to be scrutinized, like, True. like you said. Yeah. And so it's just, it, it's, you know, when these kind of instances come out, it's just using them as a teaching moment to say, hey, like, this is what's going on. This is the truth and putting it out there that way. That's all you can do. Yeah, yeah. I think I think a danger, I'm around education a lot and I travel to a lot of different schools and they've said about the kind of hate that Logan receives and other people in the space, this is not setting a great example to our kids in terms of making mistakes either. Yeah. Because we're really scaring oh, absolutely. kids I mean, into make not making mistakes. I, that's, that's even the, the I've caught myself doing that the last 48 hours as I was debating whether or not I was going to do this. I'm like, wait, why am I debating this? Like we should be not running away from this, but actually engaging people like this to have these conversations. Yeah. Like it's, 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 it's part of the yeah. growing process. Exactly. It's, it's natural. I agree. I mean, we, I mean, I, I, I've said stuff back in high school that, you know, like when I was in the closet, I made fun of gay people. And like, it's like, it's like, Man, you you do f- that, you're, like see, you're fucked up for that. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, like, but I did that as a defense mechanism sure. and like, I can't be like, we can't go by like, oh, you said this in like seventh, you know, seventh grade, but like that was, you know, my process of coming out. And yeah, yeah. I think, I think in counter, counter his point, I, I do this sometimes. We have these little back and forths. We're about to do this not, right not, now. Not, not in a crazy do way. Do you want but this I, fucking but, smoke, Mike? <laughs> but I think, I think one of the, my, my, my intuition tells me that one of the reasons why you're upset is that we don't, we can't make a judgment based on the fact that one or two or a thousand people weren't upset by it because there's a chance and we know for a fact that many were. And so I think it's a situation where we need to be mindful of the fact that by upsetting one even, 
is 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 problematic sometimes. No, but it needs to be addressed. Addre- uh, yes. Addressed, w- right? W- one or 140,000, it needs to, to be, be addressed. addressed. Because, right. Because suffering is suffering. Being hurt is being hurt. Being offended is being offended. Right. And this is something that I feel like I fucked up on. Like, right. I fucked up. And and, and he, also, he also made a point about the, the people not that found it funny not speaking up. And I think that goes back again to cancel culture. And I think it's, it's everybody, like you see a, a person stop and help an old woman across the road with her groceries nowadays. Nobody's running around her shouting world star, world star, world star. It ain't fucking happening, bro. You know what's happening? Fights, drug deals caught on tape, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, like cheating spouses caught on camera. We have become obsessed with negative action, with with bad things. And I think so the positives, unless you're following, you know, some vibey, you know, magazine or something online, you're not seeing that stuff. But that's that, you're seeing that's the that shit. juice. That's that juice, bro. That's dirty a, laundry that's, pays the fucking bills. I've said a hundred times. It does. And so it just yeah. continues to pop up. And so I think anytime we give them that kind of ammunition, they're gonna use it. But um well, I think it's a difference between the community of people that when they see something, they out, they, they, they reach out and they lash out. And then there's the community of people that see something and then they reflect. And yeah. I think that's the movement that is taking place. You might not see it, but it is. Well, here's the people problem. People are reflecting. Here's from the this problem. Stuff. It's yeah. a small fucking movement, bro, because uh, the majority it's just of not, people- It's not small. It's, yeah, it's, okay. I'll correct you with that because right. it's not small. Right. It's just quieter. Yeah. Because <laughs> inner, inner reflection is so quieter. much quieter than saying, <laughs> yo, fuck you for you. that. You know, it's just different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think like what you're saying, it's important that we address this a hundred percent because we're trying to get better. We're growing, but it's just disappointing you know, when we're seeing, we're making progress, but then you see like, hey, we're climbing our way out a year later yep. and we're seeing Fox News, <laughs> which, CNN. Which blah, by blah, the way, blah, blah, exa- blah. exactly a, le- a year later, perfect. January, right, right on. I hate you. <laughs> but, I, I hate me. <laughs> to In us, January. To us, there's so many employees, there's people around here that we're all working together. It's a team. And so I think, you know, seeing that stuff, it doesn't really affect us at the end of the day, but you know, it's, it's good to set the record straight. If I have to be the lightning rod of chaos and calamity in order for extreme change, yeah. macro, macro yeah. scale conversation, I will fucking do that. <laughs> Attack me all you want and I will address anything that you think that I think needs to be addressed in order for the progression of society. And and one one. <laughs> And I'm just saying, I'm fucking fired up. Cause Let's yo, go. I'm here to change the fucking world. True. I'm here to Dent just have the a, universe. I, yeah, exactly. I'm here, I here, I'm here to make sure we as humans move forward, not backward. And any time yeah. that I feel like I may have done that, which w- w- I feel like I may have done with this last. Uh, I, th- I think that's the important thing is, is, is realizing that. Do you believe that you made a mistake? And and I think you said yes, you do, and that you're willing to have these teachable moments to move the ball forward. And I think that's where we got to go. Is that like, hey, I think pe- <laughs> yes, I think people are just getting sick of like, how many chances are we going to get? And I'm sick of that. And by the way, to, to Spencer's <laughs> point on that, people people um, it, it, they become scared of making mistakes. And I think, like you said, it's teaching this lesson that mistakes are not okay. And I I, I challenge these people who say this is strike number two on logan one more and you're canceled well, uh, first of all we, uh, we've been yeah, canceled. Like for- but, but, but <laughs> one quick note i challenge you cancelers of the world sit down make endless 45 minute open format conversation after conversation after vlog after conversation do it perfectly without insulting offending or fucking up in any way and I will write you a check. It will be from his checkbook, but I will fucking write it. <laughs> you got it. Y'all, y'all, y'all got it. You could do it. Easy. <laughs> what, what were you going to say? No, I mean, I, I think that that's, I completely agree with you. Like one example I thought of is like, what if I was about to tweet that I was about to come on your show without the context of us actually doing the show? I would have had so much hate. And, you, and, you, I, yeah. I can almost yeah. guarantee you would have backed out. Yeah. Exactly. I was going to tweet and, and, and say how excited I am for this. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not going to, because- you probably would have backed out, yeah. which <laughs> I, well, I, I, 
Maybe. I, mean, may, may, yeah. I don't know. You're like, he's yeah. pretty yeah. courageous. Dude, your it character. Like, but I mean, like, I flew all the way out here. At that point, I probably would have still come on at this point. Like, <laughs> no, but yeah. I am mad that like, I, you guys are doing like the sober January. I thought we were have like martinis out. Or oh, hell no, bro. Dude. Sober vegan, which by the way, I've almost broke so many times, but I haven't yet. Stayed strong. I'm sober vegan. Stayed strong, my friend. I had to make it through my birthday sober and vegan, wow. dude. It was tricky. He wow. did it. And I did it. I was. <laughs> Great job, Mike. Great job, Mike. So, so do you feel do you feel like we've addressed everything that needs to be addressed, or is there something that you want to talk about? I think that you've you've you realized that you had a mistake. I think it's just up to you to continue that action, right? Like, well, I mean, now I know it's yeah. it's very easy. Yeah, exactly. Because it's because at the end of the day, bro, it's just ignorance. It's yeah. not again. There's no malicious intent with all, especially with this, which is why I'm so comfortable talking about it. Is because I'm very pro gay. I'm pro progress. Yeah. Um, so I have a I have a oh, quick yeah. question. Instead of Instead of doing what was the original plan for March, do you have a suggestion that maybe oh, wow. would be more productive <laughs> oh, wow. and could drive some positive awareness? <laughs> Ooh. This is putting you on the spot, That's by the really way. If you want to wait and tweet yeah, yeah, let's, let's, you can oh, get me a few more minutes. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think like I think just use this because we're obviously gonna have some press after this. Um, is is you know encourage your followers to, like follow Glad and and do say hey like here's here's what happened here's a conversation we had let's let's use this as a teachable moment and um, you can follow this organization to to do better and then uh, let's just see what happens over the next few months to to keep doing that ally if you make these mixed steps is is reaching out to people like me to say hey how do we make this a teachable moment and yeah and then maybe cool. next time we can go do something more fun. Than, I like, agree. I'm like, I mean, like, yeah, like, I'm down. We do fun things sometimes. Go for a ride. I, ha in a plane. I haven't been because my fucking tonsils. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Fortnite's fun. Fortnite's. We, we, I just we, tweeted about this. I have no idea what Fortnite is. Oh, come try it. I have come, no hang idea out, it come hang out with us. What is it? Is it like a, a video hold game? On, hold on. That's, yeah. that's, that's odd. I, I feel like I'm about to get murdered for that. Is there going to be a cancel Josh? Because <laughs> no, no, you're good. No, you're no, good. No. How old are your brothers? The one is 21, one is 23. One just signed up to go into the army as a drone pilot. Um, so Thank you, brother, for that. Yeah, so I they probably know what it is, but. Yeah. As a drone pilot? Yeah, for That's the awesome. army. Yep. So it'd be oh, stationed in Vegas? Shit. I don't I don't know. Uh I don't know where the army is. Okay. I'm only Air Force. Yeah, yeah. That's so. very cool. Okay. Um I think I'm 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 very happy with this podcast. Um and again, really thank you for coming on. I understand if you guys are gonna tweet hate it, Josh, please don't. Tweet it at us. Uh, <laughs> just send it back at us. I'm fine. It's fine. I've dealt with it before. I'm canceled currently. Uh, Josh Seafree, thank you for coming on. Is this is this still is this still happening? Yeah, can they yeah. can they get this book? Absolutely. Our time. Um, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip through with this pictures. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for listening and watching to this episode of Impulsive. Thank thanks again for your service, by the way. Oh, and, yeah. I, and and to anyone out there serving, like to yeah, huge thanks to you. Huge thanks to you. Just got to say it. I, Sorry. I, I echo Sorry. that. Massive thank you. Uh, if you're not been part of the uh, Impulsive Gang, make sure to subscribe, like this video, and uh, we will see you guys next time. Take it easy, fam. Peace.